<laughs> That's so funny. It's a thing of a joke. <laughs> you want to tell it to me? In 1972, the candidate for the presidency of the United States, George Wallace, suffered an assassination attempt by Arthur Bremer. The following year the book An Assassin's Diary was published, compassed mainly of Bremer's diary, where he unleashed his mental decay and his obsession with gaining the world's attention. These experiences sparked interest in Paul Schrader, who shortly after getting into debt and divorce, wandered depressed through the streets of New York while getting drunk. It was then that as a therapy he wrote Taxi Driver. A pessimistic view of society from the perspective of a mentally disturbed protagonist. A vision that Martin Scorsese materialized in 1976 and that served as the main model for Todd Phillips when directing Joker. We see in both Travis Bickle and Arthur Fleck the failed attempt to integrate socially and the expression of violence as a reaction. Which would eventually and accidentally lead them to hero status. So it's worth analyzing both characters to understand how they came to a similar ending considering their differences. To do this, we are going to address their pasts, their mental illnesses, how they think and how they act, and finally, the journey of both characters until the end of their stories. The spoiler alert is well deserved because we're going to compare these complex characters. Travis Bickle turns out to be a mysterious character because we know very little of his past and several questions about him come to mind that are never answered in the film. We know that he fought in the Vietnam War, but we don't know what happened specifically with him being there. We do not know why he lives in New York if he does not have relatives or acquaintances in that city, and we do not know where he gets his medications or what they are for exactly. At the beginning of the story, he suffers from insomnia, so he decides to work as a taxi driver to do something with that time. On Arthur Fleck's side, we have more knowledge about his past. He was adopted by Penny Fleck, but when Arthur was a child she allowed her boyfriends at the time to physically abuse him. The reports that Arthur stole, mentioned that the hits he received, left him a severe trauma to his head, which would cause mental problems that we will see shortly. Both Arthur and his mother were admitted to Arkham Hospital. In the beginning of the story he is working on something quite related to what he wants and is in the process of doing stand-up comedy. The presentation of his character tells us the whole situation he is going through. He tries to pretend to be happy and make people laugh, but in reality he is unhappy and broken inside. Whereas Travis Bickle's presentation is more subtle but equally effective. He is introduced with a disturbed look full of uncertainty while the lights of New York invade his face reflecting the torment that he lives in the most dangerous streets of the city. Regarding thoughts and behaviors, both characters have the habit of writing down their thoughts and day-to-day -day experiences in a journal. With the difference that Arthur also uses it as a joke diary, he puts everything in the same place, he does not consider that they are things that shall be separate. We constantly see insinuations from him about the idea of suicide, and other times they are totally direct references. Most of Travis's thoughts are directed at expressing his hatred for the scum on the streets, both literally and metaphorically. He hopes that one day a great rain will clean the streets. Which suggests that he has contained violence. We are clear about his opinions, but these are not consistent with his actions. He hates the people he sees at night, like drug addicts, thugs, pimps and prostitutes, what he calls scum. But at the same time, he voluntarily drives in the worst parts of the city at night and lets his passengers mess up his taxi. He's a prophet and a pusher, partly truth, partly fiction. Walking contradiction. And indeed, Travis is a very contradictory character. In the case of Arthur Fleck, he makes an effort to think and act in a way that is consistent with the values of society. One of the biggest differences with Travis is that Arthur is self-aware. He knows that his pathological laugh is something that makes others uncomfortable or annoying. So he carries a card to apologize, although that doesn't stop him from being seen as a freak. One of Travis's biggest problems is his lack of self-awareness. He doesn't think about how others see him, he doesn't question whether his acting is what causes his lonely situation, and as a result Travis thinks it's the fault of others. Although he journal his thoughts, he doesn't really do introspection, so he never understands the source of his problems. Arthur knows what is the way to behave, but his illness does not allow him, and therefore the others move away from him. 
Travis does not know what is the correct way to behave and tends to isolate himself, he is someone much more immersed in his thoughts. And about the sexual behavior of both characters. We see Travis constantly consume erotic content, but we never see him release all that stimulation. So his sexuality is also contained. On Arthur's side, the only thing we know about how he expresses his sexuality are the photographs of naked women in his diary. Joker does not delve further into this topic, but in Taxi Driver, sexuality is one of the most important dimensions of the main character. If we analyze the mental illnesses of both characters, at first glance Arthur's are more serious than Travis's. Still, in both cases their pathologies are enough to make it quite difficult for them to integrate into society. We see in Travis common psychological consequences in veterans, such as social self-isolation, apathy, irritability, and of course, post-traumatic stress, which may explain his insomnia, difficulty concentrating, and anxiety. In Arthur's case, the disease that stands out the most is pseudobulbar effect, or emotional incontinence, which is an emotional disorder characterized by causing episodes of uncontrollable laughter or crying, or both at the same time. One of the causes of this disorder is brain injury. Which is the surest thing that caused this disease in Arthur, since we know that in his childhood he received serious physical abuse. Contrary to what one might think at first glance, Arthur did not suffer from schizophrenia, as he was aware that his fantasies were the product of his imagination. Nor could we say that he is a psychopath because he did not lack empathy. The murders he carried out were guided more by fury, and not by fun or pleasure of murder. Continuing with Travis, a scene that reveals a lot about his mental state is when he takes Betsy to see an adult movie. He doesn't stop to think if it is something suitable to go see on a date, Travis does it because it is something he usually does. This indicates that he has a deficit in the theory of mind, the ability to understand and predict the behavior of other people, as well as their intentions and beliefs. A disorder Travis and Arthur have in common is chronic depression, also called dysthymia. Which is similar to major depression, but less intense and longer lasting. Travis makes us notice the presence of this disease with his loneliness, but Arthur verbalizes it with precision. All I have are negative thoughts. One factor that aggravated Arthur's mental situation is that although he received his medicines, he never had real psychological help. You don't listen, do you? I don't think you ever really hear me. Correct psychological care could have made a big difference, he could have learned to deal with his anger, express himself better or learn social skills. After the budget for these services was cut, it is certain that his lack of medicines contributed to his mental situation worse. The mental and moral decline of both characters is fueled by the environment in which they find themselves. On Arthur's side, people constantly turn their backs on him and hurt him. While Travis has to witness daily the perversions and crimes of the streets, At first, it seems that Travis's only goal is to establish a relationship with a woman as part of his attempt to integrate into society after serving in Vietnam. We see him fail once, and then again with Betsy. Travis has had thoughts of rage against the scum of the city before, but it is after Betsy's rejection that he lets his destructive ideas surface and begins to prepare to unleash his contained violence. On Arthur's side, he initially feels invisible, so his goal is to fit in with society, and being a comedian is one way he can receive attention, affection, and approval from others. What led him to develop his violent behavior was his anger and frustration at persisting social rejection and collecting several blows in his life. Randall betrays him and gets fired from work. He can no longer access social security or his medicines. He discovers that his mother has lied to him all his life, breaks with his fantasy of a better life, and Murray humiliates him in front of all his viewers. The moment Randall hands the gun over to Arthur could be seen as the first step on the road to violence. At first he just played with it, but he didn't miss the opportunity to use it the next time he was attacked. With the murders, Arthur's other identity begins to emerge, the Joker. Since it is the first time that he unleashes his fury by way of violence. He was further motivated to follow that identity when the media made him notorious and protesters in the city praised what he did. Something he tells to his therapist. I didn't know if I even really existed, but I do. And people are starting to notice. In both Taxi Driver and Joker, we are presented with two worlds. One civilized that follows the rules and another that is the opposite. 
In Taxi Driver the uncivilized world would be the one where all the crime and scum that Travis describes is found. And Joker would be the protesters who together represent a revolutionary movement that would soon use violence. Travis fits neither the civilized world nor the marginal one. He tries to enter civilized life, but his way of behaving prevents it. Nor does he join the marginal world full of crime and scum because he repudiates it. This fuels his position as someone isolated from the rest of the world. Arthur also fails to join civilized society, although he does receive acceptance from the protesters. But before getting to that, it is necessary to address the conflict that is behind the desire of fit in society, since Arthur and Travis are dealing with the feeling of emptiness, since both are miserable with the reality they live. Travis feels that every day is the same, he doesn't know how to spend his money, he doesn't know what he wants, but he wants to do something. He is in search of a purpose in his life, of something that makes him feel that he did something important and, like Arthur, wants to stop being invisible to society. I just want to go out and, and, you know, like really, really, really do something. Both then have the objective of gaining notoriety, whether by hook or by crook, and this is accompanied by the emotional need to release the anger they have contained. To satisfy these two things, Arthur focuses on Murray and Travis on Palantine. After Betsy rejects him, Travis becomes obsessed not only with her, but also with the candidate she works for. He puts up posters supporting Palantine in his apartment, attends his speeches and watches his interviews on television. It is to him that Travis has shifted his destructive emotions. Ironically, Travis takes Palantine's message that the people are the ones to rise up and take control as one more motivation for the act he is about to commit. Palantine became the subject with whom Travis would unleash his contained violence and at the same time he would give importance to his life. When his initial plan fails, he decides to change the subject but still has the same intentions. Suck on this. In Arthur's case, after being humiliated by Murray, he gets the opportunity to participate in his show, and in addition to planning to satisfy the aforementioned objectives, he decides to appear publicly for the first time as Joker. While on the show he expresses all his social frustrations until he commits his final act. Although Arthur never mentioned having an interest in a political stance, his actions motivated a growing revolutionary movement. A movement that gave him the recognition and reception that he has always wanted. Being the Joker is how he has obtained acceptance. Although that acceptance has come from vandalism. On the contrary, Travis ends up killing three detestable beings both for him and for others, but he does not manage to end his own life. Which led the police and the media to interpret what he did as an act of heroism, also achieving the much desired recognition. So, we have on one side a vigilante who managed to integrate into society, and on the other side, a revolutionary symbol that will remain in criminality. Both were men who, acting under their own goals, ended up being heroes of their own worlds. That's all for today. If you liked it, don't forget to visit the channel and subscribe to support this content. Thank you very much for watching.